Hi there. I'm Dan Kindelera, and Bob Greenberg has graciously offered to give me some time. Uh, I'm here today, actually, because I recently had a book released. The name of the book is Recovery from Lyme, The Integrative Medicine Guide to Diagnosing and Treating Tick-Borne Illness. It turns out that tick-borne illness is, is still a, an incredibly controversial issue in Western medicine today. And I'll tell you briefly how I got, interest, got introduced to it. In 1996, in the middle of the summer, I came down with a high fever and shaking chills and muscle aches. These symptoms recurred every week. And uh, when I finally went to a friend and colleague, he uh, sent off some blood tests and they came back with Lyme disease, which was a relief. Oh, wow, fine, I'll take antibiotics for 10 days to, to three weeks and I should be fine, a simple bacterial infection. I wasn't fine. And what uh, transpired is that I continued antibiotics for over a month. I was still feeling very poorly and I had additional symptoms. I couldn't sleep at night. I had severe anxiety and... Um, and I called up a person who is considered a world expert. He was at my alma mater, Tufts University. And uh, I presented my case to him and said, what do you think? And he said, well, you don't have Lyme disease. And I said, why not? And he said, because if you had Lyme disease, you would be cured by now. And I said, what about the blood test? I'd actually repeated the blood test. I said, the blood tests were a slam dunk. And he said, false positive, blood test must have been wrong. And I said, well, what do I have? And he said, something else. That was it. That was the whole conversation. And basically, that was my introduction to what is now called the Lyme Wars. This expert, who's still considered an expert, was categorically wrong. There is no question I had Lyme disease. He was also correct that I did have something else. The something else was a co-infection, another infection that I got from the same tick attachment. At that point, I also had babesiosis, and that's what was giving me the very high fever, shaking chills, and drenching sweats. That was my introduction to tick-borne infections and it was a pretty rude introduction. I was very sick for a long time. At that point, Babesia was under the radar and doctors weren't treating it. Um, I think I got another tick attachment. I got another co-infection called Bartonella. And basically, I decided once I got well to devote my practice to just treating people with tick-borne infections because it became clear to me that the mainstream Western medicine, they, they were not only didn't have anything to offer, they were actively denying the patients like myself. So, uh, so I've had a ton of experience, both personal and professional. I really wanted to be able to hand it down and that's why I wrote the book. It's interesting how often patients still get dismissed and Interesting, uh, we're now seeing people suffering from something that looks just like chronic Lyme and is called long COVID. That is people with the so-called long hauler so syndrome uh, after having a COVID infection and usually a mild COVID infection with their chronic fatigue and brain fog and muscle aches and joint pains and headaches. Guess what? It's just like Lyme disease. So. Uh, Bob suggested I share some anecdotes about, the, about Lyme disease, and I can describe what happened to my granddaughter, who was two years old when she got on a plane with her parents and sister, went from the East Coast to Israel, which is where they live. And about a month after she got there, she, um, she started crying and wailing and she refused to walk. She had a swollen, hot knee. And they took her to Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. 
They took fluid out of the knee and it had a very high white count suggestive infection. They said, wow, this must be a septic arthritis, usually staph. They were giving her intravenous medications for staph. And of course, what my daughter did was she called me. Well, before my granddaughter got on the plane, she was playing in the backyards of, my, of her grandparents. And those, uh, I'm sorry, of her great grandparents. <laughs> and those were in New Jersey and Long Island. And a month later, she comes down with an acute arthritis of her right knee. And I said, hey, folks, I talked to the doctors there in Hadassah Hospital. I said, this isn't this isn't septic staph arthritis. This is Lyme disease, and here's the antibiotic she should be on. They were fine with that, and they treated her appropriately, and she got better. <laughs> but interestingly, a visiting doctor, a rheumatologist from the United States, said she doesn't have Lyme disease, and that and that's that's what people with Lyme disease, with Lyme um, are confronting on a daily basis, doctors who are dismissive and in denial. And I'm hoping that by virtue of having this book in hand, they will have what they need to both talk to their doctors who are in denial, but also talk to their doctors that are willing to work with them because it really gives us step-by-step -step how, how do we deal with it? what turns out to be an incredibly complex illness. It's not just one infection, it's generally multiple infections that we get from these ticks. And then because these multiple infections cause systemic inflammation, we see problems throughout the body. So basically, if you have symptoms like chronic fatigue, brain fog, muscle aches, joint pains, sleep problems, mood problems, consider the possibility that you have a chronic tick-borne infection.